Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Elaborators. Today on The Elaborators, I'm pretty actually, I'm pretty actually, I'm actually pretty. No, I'm excited to uh, to welcome into the studio, of course, some very beautiful people as well. Producer Simon is with me. G'day, mate. G'day. I'm excited to have you with me. What do you plan on doing today? Listening and learning, hopefully a lot, and being challenged a lot. It's going to be a good episode. So today we thought we'd talk about, you know, the origins of the planet and uh, start with Genesis chapter one. So we're going to be elaborating on Genesis chapter one. And to do that, Stan Ritchie's in the house. How are you, mate? Hey, hey, good I'm here. You. I'm doing all right. Doing You're looking, all right. You are yeah. looking particularly well created today, I've got to say. Yeah, well, actually, that's actually because pretty or pretty camera. actually? Pretty actually, actually pretty. I don't know. You are Ken Off. That's all I'm going to say to that. That's, oh my there we goodness. go. So, oh, yeah, boo, welcome, boo, welcome. Hiss, hiss. Oh, what are you? It's <laughs> booing and hissing. That's uh, it started. Uh, not, uh, yeah, not a Barbie man. You're not a Barbie man. No, a, in a Barbie world. I'm a Barbie girl. And anyway, look, we started. How did we get to this place? Because you booed. It's <laughs> when, your, you booed. All I said was you are Ken no, Off, and I'm I gave you, I gave you this applause, and I was trying to encourage you, and. And, and I'm now, talking about in life in general. How do we get wow. to this place? How do we get to this place? <laughs> we are, wow. doctors, we're not starting small here. We've no. got the creation mm. of everything and how do we get to this place? Well, Barbie land of the real world. Yeah. Wow. Right. Well, I don't, I don't, I, I, yes, I think there's a fairly clear distinction between, an, a, 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 you know, a plastic model. Anyway, uh, look, what we what we what we thought <laughs> we might <laughs> attempt to do. Those weren't in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> not in the show notes. What we thought we'd attempt to do is start at the very beginning because, as Julie Andrews said, that's a very good place to start. And it's the foundation of the whole of uh, our faith. Uh, it's the foundation of our descriptions of God. It's, our, it's, it's the very first verses that we read when we open. In the scriptures, and believe it or not, Stan Ritchie and producer Simon, they have been known to be controversial words. So I thought we'd start very, very quickly with the idea of what does it mean to actually know that you're a created being? Does that help you in any way from the get go? Jump in, boys. Wow, Anytime yeah. okay. you're ready. <laughs> well, here, here's here's the basis of that question, right? So if if I if I have um, if if I if I have a creator. Then I know there's there's a definitive purpose and a divinity a di- divinity behind it, which actually gives me, a, I believe, a stronger sense of self and a stronger sense of the makeup of myself being spirit, mind, body, soul. Because again, it's very very complex to describe all of those things very succinctly and very simply. But Instagram can do that with quotes, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the right filter, we yeah. can explain yeah. anything. So yeah, with three emojis, right? So, so we well, talk about uh, being created in his image. Well, and, well, that's what the scripture says. I mean, there's an intrinsic value in that statement if you accept it and everything. But I, I think most people uh, will react the opposite direction to that. Mm-hmm. If I'm a created being, then, uh-oh, I'm responsible to something else or someone else right. because they, they created me. So, And, and, and there's the rub. That's why Genesis chapter one is controversial. So let's let's get into it. This is what it says: In the beginning, God. Okay, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> done, done. There were three days now. In the um, beginning, yeah. In the what? beginning, God. Yeah, God. There, there, uh, there is no explanation of where this God came from. There's no prequel to Genesis chapter one. No, George Lucas would ruin it. But uh, <laughs> he he was already there. He was there before in the beginning. Before in the beginning, he was there, and at the end, after the end, before the... Yep. 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 So I I have heard very smart people, much smarter than me, describe other dimensions and all that sort of stuff. But the way I read that is the source of everything has a beginning. There is a beginning. And so we read it in Genesis, in the beginning, God, and then created the heavens and the earth. That's the very first verse of everybody's Bible. How does it help you, Stan, to know that that verse is there? How does that help me? Mm-hmm. Well, it gives me confidence um, in the existence of God. Mm. I mean, that that's the the, the starting place is, um, you know, if there is no God, then life is meaningless. So, yeah, it just, that that's the. the I, I, I like the idea place, of yes. I like the idea of God uh, existing before we did, mm-hmm. simply because it gives us a relationship outside of 
the humanity that we live within and are confused by and confronted by every single day. When we look uh, at the at the world and attempt to bring peace to it in whatever form you're doing that, you know, in parenting, in relationships, in, in those small ways we're doing it and noticing that the chaos continues and we can't change it, the idea that there was a God there that existed before me and loves me despite what's going on around me that I don't have control over, but he does, gives me great hope. Yeah, I, I can see that. That That's certainly the, the fact that we're not God, that there is something greater and bigger than us is um, certainly comforting um, because there's way too many situations I can't control, which is so <laughs> frustrating. Between you and producer Simon. Uh, yeah. the- <laughs> I, I like to fix things. You know, you give me a problem. Sorry, We're sorry. Fix I, I heard fix. You heard fix. I heard control. <laughs> <laughs> but that's but that, but there again is the rub, right? We're trying to fix. We're trying to control. And the idea of of um, you're under- out of control. Yeah, I've well, been that way my whole life, baby. It's, it's, it's that's what thing. I love about you. <laughs> yes. Yes. But the idea of um, creation bringing dignity to humanity uh the idea of without a without a created purpose then there may if 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 there is no purpose if there is no reason to my existence then you know ergo there is no reason for anybody else's existence therefore i can define someone else's existence as meaningless as well and have no care toward them so i think i think the idea that there is uh equality and dignity within the idea of all people being created in his image in his image yeah gives me the sense that i am not just responsible for me i'm responsible for your peace and your well-being as well and all of creation yeah yeah, yeah. because that's what he gave humans the job to do is, yeah. is to care for creation and each other. It's yeah, it, it's mind blowing. Yeah, so yeah. I, I think there are some essentials. If if you okay. if you we, we're talking about the essentials of your faith, uh, I'm assuming this would be one of those essentials of knowing that you were loved and created by in the, uh, by an in the beginning God. Would would there be other essentials that you'd throw in there? Oh yeah, there's there's a few essentials. Um, I think we we have to accept that God is the creator, uh, and that that's where that that defines the difference between an atheist um, mm. and uh, a believer in any faith. Really, is, is that we we believe that there is a creator, but beyond that, there's a there's a lot to that discussion though about the creator and. and I think we get hung up on the how. How did that creation happen? Mm. And we end up dividing and arguing over that. Anyway, so it's essential that God created. The how, maybe not quite so much essential. I, I have strong views about it, sure. um, and I'm happy to share those at some point. But it's not that the, the how isn't the essential. The fact that God created is the essential in that one. The other essentials to me would be the inspiration of Scripture, that the Bible is the Word of God and it came from God, the virgin birth of Christ, the, the deity of Christ, that He, Christ, was God in the flesh, His uh, substitutionary death for my sins and the sins of the whole world, and His bodily resurrection. Um, those would be the essentials. And, and salvation is by grace through faith. Mm. Beyond that, most things are pretty negotiable. Yeah, and, and again, it's 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 saying that when we look at Christendom across the world, you will get uh, very very broad discussions on everything. Uh, well, essentially beyond that, right? Yeah. Well, sadly, yeah, sadly, sadly, <laughs> sadly, even even on those things, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But again, I think for for the for the for the um, for the purposes of this podcast, it's important to say on the elaborators here that's that's our starting point. Our starting point is are uh, those essentials, yeah, yeah. And, and if you were to come to our church, which is Werribee Baptist Church, by the way, uh, you would you would hear uh, teaching that is that's the foundation of that teaching. That when we teach from the Bible, we believe it's the inspired Word of God given to us through the servants of God. But there are there, there's a lot of there's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of crazy out there, um, and and I think you know again we we are monotheists. We believe in 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 one true God in uh, three persons in three. <laughs> Gee, we're getting deep quick on the elaborators today. Jump in anytime you come. And they were there. all involved in creation. 
Pardon? They were all involved in creation. Oh, come on. Now we're getting interesting. Mm. I was I was going to say the polytheistic sort of view of the world is is all the gods are, are, are at war with each other all the time and that that chaos is represented on earth and that's why um, there's – but the idea that um, the, the whole fight of creation is for power, you know, and we see that represented in humanity where we see powers fighting against other powers – and we say no. There's, it's it's not a pantheon of gods. It's one God who actually brings unity to His creation, to His humanity. If we could come to this foundational idea that He created us all in His image, and so there's actually great to me anyway, great peace in understanding that there's we our God of justice is a God of unity. Is not a God of racial division or language division or any other cultural division. He's a God that is is saying to His creation, "I want to reconcile you unto myself." And so part of our our conversation, part of our teaching here, is to point people to the one true God. And one way we do that, of course, is we're going to do a series. We're going to do a few teachings through the Book of Genesis. Uh, you've jumped into this into this uh, preparation stand uh, yep. to get this first message together. That I know you're getting together. What's been the What's been the thing that's jumped off the page at you? What's been exciting about unpacking Genesis one again? Well, I was trying to get into the actually creation story and really got bogged down in, in the beginning God, you know? Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. So, so, so yeah, so, so just, just the evidence for the existence of God through creation, mm. uh, creation screams out that there's, there is a, a, a God. Uh, so that's jumped off the page. The, the, one of the other things that jumped off for me, um, which this, this may not be news to uh, a lot of people, but uh, I think it, I saw it in a different light. Mm -hmm. When you start looking at uh, the theory of evolution and uh, the origins of that was, uh, or at, at least the the known father of it would, would have been Charles Darwin. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he's very famous for, for his work in that. Was You mentioned a while ago that God is not um, uh, divisive and, uh, you know, the races and the languages mm -hmm, and all, mm -hmm. all that kind of thing. The reality is evolution and Darwin's theory of evolution was actually fueled by racism. Wow. And or, or I should say at least racist embraced it, you know, uh, engaged with it uh, very uh, heartily. The book that he wrote, The Origin of Species, that's mm -hmm. what's commonly known. Yep. Well, the original title of that book, and you can go to Amazon.com and you can look this up right now. You can buy a copy of this book. The title of the book is... On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection mm -hmm. or the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. That puts a slightly different spin on it, doesn't it? It does. Mm -hmm. It does. And, and that, that kind of blew me away. Interesting, uh, as I was beginning to think through all this, we went away a couple of weeks ago for our anniversary and spent some time in the city. One of the places we went to was the Immigration Museum here, oh, yeah. here in Melbourne, Australia. Yeah. And Deanna's wanted to do that for 20 years. So that was like the bucket 20, list. Thing. It took you 20 yeah. years to take her on a date that's half an hour away? Well done, you. Well done, you. It's that's that's a husband to win. It's the Immigration Museum, dude. It, it doesn't on. sound... It, it, no, i got to say, they, they could come up with a snazzier title, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but what, one thing I, I saw throughout that is when, when they talked about uh, uh, the different periods where... Um, uh, there's so many things I could talk about, yeah. but periods where they would look at uh, new people coming to Australia, one of the, the key things was protecting the race, the, the, mm. the superior race. And, and yeah. the, the other thing that, that, that blew me away, and, and the, these are going to sound like they're opposed to each other, but sadly, I don't think they were, is the historicity of Christianity in Australia. Mm. They wanted to protect the superior race and the Christian foundations. Yeah. Those were the two elements that came across as I uh, went through the immigration museum. And any social science today would explain to you that where Christianity is actually getting its reinvigoration from is everywhere else in everywhere the world. Else. And that's the beautiful thing about God is God moves how God moves. Yeah. Yeah. And he will He will show us our own ugliness if we need to see it. Uh, but, but that is certainly an ugly part of our history, this idea that there are peoples that uh, yeah don't get don't uh, aren't as godly or don't have access to the same God that we you know so uh, what I love about that and, and you will see this certainly in in our city and in our church is that every well how many nations did we say last time we counted it was 
It was more well, than... It's over 50. Over 50. Um, and, and it's a beautiful thing. Actually, uh, many times uh, after church on a Sunday, I, I'll, I'll be recognising that my accent is um, unique um, in the conversation yeah. with people that I'm having. So I actually it's have to... It's rural s- Victoria. Yeah, it's right? rural. Yeah, I can, I can talk farmer. I can talk farmer. I can drop it down there. Or I can even talk Queenslander if you want. I can go right up there. <laughs> I, I've just offended most of my friends. Anyway... Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those things where if the church does not recognise that the new life it's being given around the world comes from uh, nations other than uh, the ones you may expect, mm. uh, it's it's it well, it's it's going to die itself. But it's it's okay because God's in control and He builds the church, and that's like Jesus builds the church, and that's all good. So we can yep. take great confidence of that. But so so you got stuck literally on. <laughs> Genesis chapter one, not even uh, just just verse one, like half like, of verse like one, the first like, five like words. In or the four beginning, words. God yeah, created the heavens and the earth, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it goes on to say the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters, and that's mm. the mm. image that we have. Um, yeah. There's uh, what I love. I love getting into some of the the science of this, and do you know? <laughs> This is very, very random. But I do like the idea that 95% of the universe, we don't even know what it's made of. So I find, yeah, yeah, we know mm. like four to five percent, and I and I found the word for it. We so could God be in that other ninety five percent? This is where I love to go with it because we we know visible baryonic matter. Okay, baryonic matter makes up four to five percent. Yep. Of the known universe, that's I can touch it, I can feel it, I can see it, I can. It reflects light, it has density, all those sort of things. Then there's dark matter, and dark matter takes up around twenty seven percent, as okay. far as we know. We can't actually tell you what dark matter is, but we're pretty sure it's there, and that's that's what that is. And then there's dark energy, mm-hmm. and that's the rest of it. <laughs> Right, <laughs> and, and we. Uh, I, I actually got a, a bit of a. This is just a bit of bit of fun. Uh, mysterious form. Dark matter is a mysterious form of matter that doesn't interact with electromagnetic forces and doesn't emit light. It's estimated to make up twenty seven percent of the total mass energy of the kind of the universe. Blah 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 blah. Dark energy is another enigmatic component of the universe, but it's not matter. <laughs> Are you with me so far? No, yeah. So often when we're talking about the the creation that we see, we, we need to understand how little we actually even see. Wow. So it's gr- it's actually a great encouragement to me that in the beginning... God. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Because... Well, I think, I think the... Wow, you're tapping in so much there. Good. The, the, Keep talking. This well, is the elaborators. Yeah, Go. Yeah. Well, when you consider Earth that we can see, and even the stars, and, mm. and as, as limited as that is, our exposure to it, but uh, human existence, plants, life, animals, and, and just um, uh, the Earth itself and the seas and the rivers and the mountains, what we can understand about all of that is enormously complex and everything. It's also enormous, enormously fragile. Right. The, and the fact that they say if the earth was tilted just one degree mm. or something different, then we would all either be frozen or roasted and things yeah. like that. And, and nothing works if there's any variation at all from, from what is there. So honestly, when you start thinking about the, the 4 or 5% that we can see, that's the inhabitable 4 or 5% that God has set there for us. Mm. When he created us, he created us in an environment, the only environment in the universe, as vast as it can be and as much as we can study and see. Mm. We're the only inhabitable place. And it's just so intricate the way that that works that, to me, it screams creation. I I think, uh, yeah, and and again, I'm sure listeners will say, well, you guys are biased, you're both pastors in the church and all the rest of it. And I think, yes, we, we are well, is it is it biased to say the testimony that I've seen of people throughout my life, the testimony I've seen of of God at work in people's lives, um, is is not just uh, an academic exercise. It's something that we've seen replicated over and over in you know in our local neighbourhood and around the world. So mm-hmm. the existence of God interacting with His creation, uh, I think, is is I, I'm unmovable on that. <laughs> Right, 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 and, and and that is the that's really the bottom line. Mm. Um, but a lot of people just heard you say that, and they're interpreting that differently than what you just said. Okay, how are they interpreting? A lot of people just heard you say that you believe in a six literal twenty four hour day creation account, and the Earth is only four to six thousand years old. That's what people just heard you say. Because I said God interacts with His creation. Mm-hmm. Mm. But because yeah, you you. you 
basically saying you are a creationist. You, well, you believe that God created. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's yeah. where that's where people well, and the fact that we're biased. The, the, oh, the those, bias those, those statements right. that people are interpreting that generally speaking that way. Hmm. But theologians actually have a variety of views about this. Yeah, and, and I don't I, I think I've shared with you before. I don't particularly I've never had to come to an, a, yeah. a complete yeah. conclusion. So I was taught as a kid, um, you know, God created the earth and that's the way it reads in my Bible. Yep. But I've also understood that if I wanted to get into it, there's multiple multiple views. Mm-hmm. Uh, the young young earth creationism, which is the one That's the six literal 24. We just talked about yep. old yep. earth creationism. Yeah, yeah, that's a little bit different. Uh, well, it's actually a lot of bit different. It's that we look at nature and we look at scripture and they have to align. Mm-hmm. If there's any contradiction, then clearly one of them's wrong. One, one of them's, well, they can't be though. They, they both have to be. But the old earth or progressive creationism believes that over millions or billions of years, God occasionally stepped in and created things. It's different than theistic evolution or that, uh, you know, God did the big bang and then he hands off. Mm-hmm. It's that over time, millions and billions of years, God has created. It's all been miraculous. Each time, every now and then, he says, "Okay, ah, uh, we need some emu, you know, or whatever." So he just does. Sorry, I okay. just love the way I love the way Americans say emu. That's my favorite thing about this podcast now. Yeah. <laughs> That's the snippet so, right there. So, That's so, it. So, so, what, so we we have emus here, Stan. What do we have? You have what? Emus, ostriches. <laughs> no, you have to say emu again. Emu. There e- it is. Emu. Emu. An emu is, is just a, an emu that wears a lot of black clothing and white face. <laughs> Didn't we just say the same thing? thing? Australians would spell it E M E W. Emu. Emu. Like a cow. Emu. Emu. Like no, that'd be emu. Moo. <laughs> yeah. You, you say like a cow. My point is that there was an emu emu. That's got nothing to do with anything. All right, anyway, back to the billions. But on the older. On the old earth creationism, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, they they actually do believe that uh, uh, humans were miraculously created. Okay. Uh, they don't believe that we evolved from something else. Although there was a lot of creatures that might have been similar, but we didn't come from those. The biggest problem with that old earth idea uh, is that they believe that animals died, death and decay were existent in the world before Adam. Right. So your question would be. What about Romans chapter 5, verse 12, that says that through one man, sin entered the world and death by sin? Yeah. So death and decay are a direct result, by the way, we understand it, by the way, of sin, which didn't happen without Adam. How did the death and decay happen before Before Adam, Adam. if sin and decay, death and decay didn't happen? Right. So that's um, that's, uh, that's old earth creation. Theistic evolution? Theistic evolution, also known as evolutionary creation, is that God created the earth and life over billions uh, of years, Mm -hmm. and the gradual process of evolution was crafted by him and governed by him to create the diversity of what we see. So basically, it it was more of a, yeah, he, he, he used evolution to create. Yeah, uh, I know that you've. I noticed that you've noted down intelligent design there. I didn't have that in my notes. Mm. Tell me, tell me what you discovered in in researching that one. Well, that that's that's interesting because one of the big things that I've been doing, mm. uh, I, I know the 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 position I take, and I mm-hmm. know that pretty thoroughly. Were you fairly intelligent <laughs> no. and well designed? <laughs> no, no, uh, no, 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 no. You that's, are creative. That, that, that's not the position I take. <laughs> but what what I've been you're doing? Not intelligent? <laughs> Well, <laughs> sorry, this is a serious conversation. What, what I've been doing is I, I've been doing uh, not a deep dive, but a, a, a mediocre dive mediocre into these dive, other yeah. views mm-hmm. uh, so that I can speak intelligently to them because it's easy for me to be up there and give my biased rant on the view that, mm-hmm. that I believe is the only one that makes any sense at all. Uh, but I want to give respect and appreciation to people that actually think different than me that still love Jesus and re- recognize that. Uh, they, they can still follow Jesus without believing the same thing I do. But anyway, the intelligent design, I'm only scratching the surface, but basically it just admits there's clear evidence of a creator because there's an intelligent designer. So they, they would take it as uh, this, um, the, the, we cannot be the result of randomness. Mm. Uh, and the evolutionary theory is built on the fact that we're a result of randomness and intelligent design says, nah, it's just too complex. The eyeball is too complex to have just happened randomly, mm. much, much less the rest of the person. I was, I was doing some research on eyelashes recently. <laughs> And and apparently, I'll leave that one alone. And bar- Barbie or no 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 eyelashes. <laughs> so, why why do you have eyelashes? 
and and it's to protect your eyes yeah, and whatever yeah. and all, all the rest of it. But apparently, uh, if your eyelashes are too short, which can happen, you get more eye infections. And if, yeah. So there you go. So 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 what 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 they were saying is uh, you should uh, wash your eyelashes every day because they they're there to stop the pollens and all the things from getting into shampoo your eyes. or no, no I, I think a face washer and some water would be fine. Yeah. So I, I feel think like shampoo in your eyes is what you try to avoid ever since you <laughs> I were think a child. That's being in the very mouth. mean to the eyelashes, it's saying deal with this mm. and then just putting shampoo on them. <laughs> like that's the whole job. Is to have stop you ever that. seen people get their eyelashes tinted? Uh, that's a wild process. To right. anyone that's ever had their eyelashes tinted, my hat goes off to you. I, I think it's. I, I think you're amazing. Uh, but but the point is that every <laughs> intricate part of your body is created and has a purpose. And has a purpose. And, and it's a pretty wild thing to think. I was uh, another little bit of randomness is that for people who wear contact lenses, uh, the reason you have to take your contact lenses out is because the eyeball actually needs oxygen as well. And so by just by by leaving them in for too long overnight, all that sort of stuff, some of the some of the uh, some of the health of the eye uh, can be affected because it needs the oxygen that it's getting from the outside, and the eyelids do a job to keep the things out, and the eyelashes do a job, and the eyebrows do a job, and it's just phenomenal when you start to break down all the very intricate moments, and that's saying nothing of the cells that we're made up of in the first place. And I just want to know why you have this much time on your hands. I don't. My brain retains <laughs> random information that I then yeah. use when I'm being you talked gotta, to. you got to blame the algorithms. You, absolutely. <laughs> Something popped up in his feed that he thought he'd like about eyelashes. <laughs> yeah. No, well, um, I do I do follow a, a – there's a, there's a fun one called Wired that I follow that uh, has a whole lot of little science-y nice. things. But there's 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 more, uh, more theories of creation and how we all came to be. But the point is that we've come to the, the conclusion that the essential – is in the beginning God. That's the essential. The how becomes a little bit less essential, although it does genuinely affect your theology going forward from there mm. and your sense of God and and, and how he interacts um, with his creation in an ongoing day-to-day -day way. So the idea of a... Uh, um, what is it? The gap theory? Yeah, the, that one where yeah, they, yeah. God just jumps in every now and again and blows something up and something new happens, which I think is basically the Matrix. That's what the Matrix is based <laughs> I on. I think it's it? the Eternals, isn't it? In Marvel, I was going to say every, every existential yep. uh, movie. Yeah, but knowing knowing that we are known is probably what I keep coming back to. Mm -hmm. Knowing that we are known, knowing that every little, like, you know, what do I have fingernails? What, do I have to, what, what does my little toe do? All those sort of fun conversations about, without my little toe, I don't balance and I fall over, so I need it there. It's not just the little piggy that went to market. Uh, <laughs> all of these things speak to me. And how do I feel? How do I, how, why do I feel things? Why do I sense God? Where does that come from? Where does your sense of conscious and all those things? How do, empathy. How do you have empathy? This idea that if I'm created and you're created, then I can feel empathy towards you. Uh, otherwise, the survival of the fittest says you're actually in my way. Hmm. Fundamentally, I don't believe you're in my way. I believe we're supposed to be walking Aww. together. Well, you're a pain in the... Anyway, <laughs> no. I don't have a beat button for what I need to say next. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> you've got to be... <laughs> Stan's thinking of a comeback. No. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking of getting back to my prep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the yeah. beginning, God, uh, you've you've uh, you've been a, a person of faith for a long time. How often yeah. have you come back to this? Do you reckon in that walk? Maybe not often enough, because, mm. because as we were alluding to earlier, um, it's when things are beyond my ability to influence, affect, fix, mm -hmm. control. Mm. For those of us like we, that, we, if if you um, lead anything in your life, including yeah. your family, or your children, but, you've you've got control. But when you get to that point you where things you can okay, have. I can't control this one. Mm. Then it's oh, in the beginning, God. Mm. You know that that you, that's the only thing you have to rest in. That, and that's sad. That it's the, that's the times that you actually realize that, and it's like, duh, you know, because we, we should just live in that all the time, mm. um, and uh, and that would create a whole lot less stress in our lives and, and and things and anxiety. Because if we just start there all the time, then we know that God's in control, and we're not as concerned about. Um, what we can or can't influence and things, <clears throat> but, but yes, and yeah. I'm telling off. No, it's all right. Yeah. I, I think I think one of the things that I always like to encourage people with is when you're in moments of stress and anxiety and whatever, whatever you can do to practice in the beginning, God, because for the most part, us 
stopping, us letting go, us not trying to control, us not trying to fix is actually a big part of the resolution and solution to your own feelings of anxiety and fear because, again, God didn't give us a spirit of fear but a love, barren, sound mind. Uh, This is not a, a power struggle that we're in all day, every day. There is a God who is in control. And if you can start, you know, those moments where you're feeling that wind up happening, where anger's maybe winding up, where fear's maybe winding up, where anxiety's winding up, coming back to this point of um, that simple prayer that says, you know, show me your glory, let Mm. me know your presence, Mm. Mm. Um, in the beginning, start again with God is actually a really, really important process. So I know I'm getting a little philosophical um, and a little allegorical with that idea of in the beginning, but the beginning of everything is uh, every, everything sort of uh, where we're trying to control is we started it, <laughs> we want to finish it, we want to fix it, I'm in control of it. And the beginning of everything with God is, no, you're not, let go, mm. come back to me, start with me. It's good. It's good. Right. So I think I think that's a pretty good place to start and maybe a pretty good place, place to, to end. Stop. Yep. How are you feeling? You feeling encouraged? Yeah. <laughs> Producer Simon's over in the corner there. My, 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 my brain's whirling around. Yeah. Just remember. And we didn't even really talk about creation. Four to five percent of the universe, <laughs> you know what? we, we know what it is. We got stuck on the first five words. In the beginning, yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. the beginning, God. Well, you are on the elaborators. This has been our first attempt at discussing the very beginning of everything. <laughs> <laughs> So we might have another attempt uh, uh, in, in the coming weeks as well. Uh, but uh, actually, yeah, I'm excited week. that you got to listen to this episode and then next next week's episode is a heap of fun. We're gonna um, we're gonna have a chat to one of the um, one of the oldest dads we yeah. can find to okay. ask about dadness. Yep. Dadness. Dadness. That's a new thing. I've just made that up. You're pretty good at dadding, aren't you? Hashtag dadness. <laughs> oh my no, goodness. No, no. He's good at daddy. Okay, that being said, everyone, ladies Prince. and gentlemen. <laughs> Fail. Fail. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Six seconds. Obligatory wave. <laughs> <laughs>